In this video, we're going to look at how to customize or start customizing version 21 of Archicad. Uh, we've just created a new file. Uh, this is now in the educational license, so now I won't have any problem saving as. Right now, I'm going to put this on my desktop just so it's accessible and you can see it. We're going to call this Archicad. I always like using capitals, it comes from an architecture background. Archicad 21 template. Now, you'll note that I'm going to call this a template, but I'm not going to save it as a template file yet. I'm just going to save it as a PLN because once we save it as a template, we can't continue saving. We need to override it, and that's a bit silly. So we're just going to use the solo project until we're happy that we've finished uh, all the settings that we need to do, and then we can save as a template file. Now, how do we distinguish these? A PLN is the plan or the standard version of Archicad. A TPL is our template file. When uh, Once we've created a, a plan file in Archicad Solo, uh, it's also going to create a backup file, BPN. And then we also have one other that we will use quite commonly, uh, and I'll show you videos how to do this is our Archicad archive project, and that's a PLA, A for archive. Of course, that looks like plan as well. So, cool. Let's save this, and then we can get back to what we were doing. So, the first thing we we're doing was trying to customize our work environment. Our work environment is made up of a few different things, but it's effectively what our screen looks like. It's the fact that we've got our navigator on, how our palettes and toolbars look. Palettes and toolbars are different but they're mostly the same and I still struggle to actually know the difference between them sometimes. What does it mean though? When we go into our window we have toolbars that we can turn on and we have palettes that we can turn on but we can also edit or customize or make our own toolbars. So again we see that the toolbars that are currently active are the ones that are ticked. Same with the palettes and that's what's floating around my screen. As I said in the last video, I'm using this as a projector, or I'm connected to a projector, and I'm also doing this as a video, so therefore the resolution of my screen is relatively small. That's why I've got such little screen size. I'm also working on a 13-inch um, MacBook Air, and so that's another reason why it's fairly small. So how do we start to customize this to make the most of our screen real estate. We've already reduced the size of this. We can see if we extend it out, this could be a lot of different shapes. Now, when you're new to Archicad, you might want to leave it quite big so you understand the names of what each of these icons mean. But once you know their names, you don't need to keep looking at them. You can narrow that all the way down until it's just the shapes, the figures. Now, two versions of Archicad go. In version 20, they changed the whole uh, visual representation, and so it took me a while to remember what a door or a window or a wall looked like because they made it a little bit more um, hip, <laughs> a little bit more representational in a vectorial way rather than a, a bitmap way, I think was, which was their idea, in order to be able to suit these sorts of computers that have a higher resolution capability. Enough talking, let's get on with the work. So when we go into our window, we can see our toolbars and palettes, we can turn them on and off, but first we need to know what they're called. We can do that by undocking them. You can see this little gray tab. If I click on that, so that's a left click, we can move it away, put it in the middle of our screen, expand it, and we see that this is called Oz, Australian, Drafting Aids. Now, these are good tools. I only use one of them. I only use this one here, which is our Offset Constraint tool. And we don't have that available here. Another place that we do have that available is in our Palettes control box. Now, when I started using Archicad, I think it was version 7, um, this is where I'd find it. And so I'd use this method, I'd use this palette and I dock it down the bottom of my screen. At the time I'd also use what was called a control box. Let's have a look at that quickly. Sorry, that was the control box, the coordinates box. And that would also give me this stuff here. We now have a, a little pet palette which is fantastic which means when I draw I've got this little number beside me that's showing the distance and the angle and we see that it's basically giving me the same information as what I've got here anyway. These ones are 
and A. Sometimes you, you might hear me talk about holding shift and typing in the letter R. Now you might say, what's R? R is down here, that's radius, whereas the new system is D for distance. So therefore, if I press R, or, let's get out of that, press escape, or press D, it's both going to give me the same information, thankfully, because Archicad recognizes that distance and radius mean the same thing. So we can choose to use our coordinates, but it's a little bit fat, it's a little bit big for what we're doing, it's going to take up more real estate, so we're not going to show it, we're going to get rid of it in this case. We can use this coordinates. I really like this coordinate system, but it's also been replaced. And we see that a lot of the settings that we've got are here, and here, and here. So it's pull downs, but it's pretty easy to get to. Um, here, so that's the suspending group. Now I don't need to use magic wand because I can also use spacebar, which is magic wand. And then the only one, other one that I use commonly is this one here, but we can find that, we can edit this, we can use this in different ways. So I'm just going to turn those off for now. Now we know what this is, we can choose to turn it on or off. So let's go to window, palettes. It doesn't tell us anywhere whether it's a palette or a toolbar, so we should look at both. There we go, Australian Drafting Aids. It's good to know that's there. We could turn that off. Now, what could I do that would be really, really clever? I could go to Oz Drafting Aids, Toolbars, Toolbars, and in here, 3D Visualization, sorry, Toolbar Options, we can create our own. We can go New, Rename, Delete, Duplicate. So we can find that one, Australian Drafting Aids. We can find this one here called offset constraints, and of course anything that's in our drafting aids, sorry, anything that's in our toolbars comes from a command list. So currently we can choose to find them based on the current system that we see up here, so file, edit, view, design. Now if you know where they are, that's fantastic. If you don't, you could change it maybe to all commands by theme or all commands in alphabetical order. So I'm looking for offset constraints, so I'm going to go all commands in alphabetical order, now we see that there is a lot of these. So if, unless you know what you're looking for, it could actually be a struggle to find them. Offset constraint, there it is. So we could then choose to add that uh, a little bit later when we're gonna start to customize our tool. So the first one we're gonna do, just so you can have a bit of a play, is we're gonna make our own toolbar. And I'm gonna make a new toolbar, and I'm gonna call this move. So we're going to put move commands in. Now, I've done this um, video a few times for people in the past, but I haven't done this in version 21. Now, it's really the same setup, but it's all part of my 21 customization template. So let's have a look at how it works. So again, I went back to commands by current menu structure, and I know that I will find these under edit, move, and then these are my move commands. Drag all the way down to multiply. There are some others, but they're the ones that I want for now. And that's it for now. Let's just do that. Of course, I can come back in and change that later. Again, I used capitals just because I do. And that helps to differentiate between what I've done and the standard stuff in Archicad. So that's also helpful. Press OK. Now, how do we make that appear? We need to turn it on. Window, toolbars. Now we see here, move. Now it's automatically going to dock. Where does it put it? It puts it at the front. It's not really where I want it. I'm going to move it back. I could change its shape. I can move the standard one. Let's expand that so we can see. It's our standard palette. Now I'm going to take this standard palette and I'm going to customize it next. Um, I can move these other ones off as well. So we can see all the different toolbars that we've got here. I think I called that a palette. Toolbars. And and then we can start to change them and make them the way that we want. So I've probably talked for long enough for this video. So this will be part one of toolbar customization. In the next one, we'll have a look at how to adjust the standard one. But of course, it's the same process. So I'm sure you'll figure it out.